The way we live our life today is revolutionized and made possible by the advances of science. Everything we use from smartphones to the internet to the computers and the way we communicate, the way we lead our life was not possible 20 years ago. I mean, if we think back 20 years, we're thinking back early technology, early computers, the use of mail, the use of old phones and how we live our life and the instant ways we can communicate, the instant ways we can get delivery uh, to our front door or do our business is, is all made instantaneously possible by science. You know, science is a very interesting discipline because the, the rules of science, although they're very abstract and hard to learn, they're actually very creative and very imaginative. And it takes great imagination and great creativity to create the computer, to create the smartphone, because all these things need to be first imagined. It's like a poet or a writer when writing a story, he or she uses a lang the language, the rules of the language, the syntax to create a beautiful experience a beautiful story, a beautiful song that takes us somewhere else. The same way science, we use the rules of science, the mathematics, the abstract equations to create a world we live in today. And I think what's really incredible is that scientific innovation is not new. It has always existed and it has always brought society to the new heights. One example of that is the dishwasher. You may think the dishwasher, well, this is something I can't live without. And I think a lot of people will probably say the same. It's an item that we all know, we, many of us grew up with, and many of us are thankful uh, to have the dishwasher. I know I am. And this dishwasher was actually invented in the 1800s, that's right, more than 100 years ago, by a woman known as Josephine Cochrane. Josephine Cochrane was a socialite in Chicago in the 1800s. She lived a lavish lifestyle, she lived in a mansion, and she entertained a lot of guests. She also had a very expensive silverware and uh, china that she used to entertain her guests and uh, she had people in the house who would clean her house and who would help her with the entertainment and who would also clean the dishes unfortunately sometimes those dishes were broken and she was very upset by it because they were very expensive so she decided that she was going to wash all the dishes herself after every party as you can imagine that was frustrating and it took a long time to wash all these dishes after all the guests. We probably, excuse me, can't even imagine that today because we use dishwasher. Well, while she was cleaning these dishes, she came about with an idea for a dishwasher. And at first it was just a dream, but shortly after her husband passed away, it became a way of economic survival because he left her a lot of debts. So for her to survive, she needed to bring about this idea and make it economically viable. And this is a first example of a female scientist and a female entrepreneur. She brought her idea to an engineer who helped her build the dishwasher. And the dishwasher that she came up with and she built is something very similar to what we use today. It was also a box that had <clears throat> several compartments. And these compartments stored different types of plates or saucers. And then there were jet streams that would run soapy water and discs that would uh, rotate and bring about this water and distribute this water along the box. And she had this idea to bring this idea to homemakers like herself. Unfortunately, she was ahead of her time and many people did not have the funds to have a dishwasher and a lot of people also had staff in their home who would do these things. But hotels were interested in this idea. So her small company grew bigger and bigger and she started distributing dishwashers to hotels. And then in 1886, she was also awarded a patent from the US Patent Office for her invention. And in 1893, she presented her invention at the Chicago World Fair. And she was also given an award for technical innovation. Now, many of us may not know, but the World Fair was a huge event back then. It was an event that was written about in all the newspapers. It was an event where people from all over the world would come and gather and look at the technical innovation. Remember, this is the 1800s. There were no smartphones, there was no internet, the way to share inf and disseminate information was through newspapers and also people needed to travel to places to see this innovation. So the fact that Josephine Quashrain was able to get an award for her work and actually presented this World Fair is a huge uh, achievement in its own right. And in uh, 1900s, when Josephine passed away, her company was later acquired by KitchenAid and nowadays it's part of Whirlpool. 
So when we think about the, the world we live in today and the objects we use, and we have to think about the people who made them and how they were made. And we, we find inspiration in small daily uh, objects and small, and small things that actually make our life much better and much greater and much bigger. So next time you want to be the next innovator, think about an object that's a day-to-day -day object and look at who invented this object and imagine yourself as that innovator, innovator making the world a better place. Thank you.